To understand the periodicity of properties deeply first, we must need to learn some important concepts that why electronic shells expand or extra shells are added in groups, and why electronic shells remain the same or extra shells are not being added in periods. Second, we must know what the shielding effect of inner electrons actually means, and when it increases or decreases. Last but not the least, we must understand what nuclear charge actually refers to. First, we will explain these important concepts, so later we can understand the periodicity of properties in a very simple and easy way. Now, we should understand why extra shells are added in groups, but are not added in periods. To understand this, let's take the example of first group elements such as hydrogen, lithium, and sodium. The atomic number of hydrogen is 1, and its valence electron is present in the first shell, which we call the K-shell. Now, if we move downward in the group and consider lithium, its atomic number is 3, and we must remember that the K-shell can have a maximum of 2 electrons. So, we have to move to the second shell to completely place the electrons of lithium. Here we can see that as we move from hydrogen to lithium, an extra shell is being added, which shows that the electronic cloud is expanded. Similarly, we can verify this for the third element of the group, sodium, whose atomic number is 11. The first shell will have two electrons, and the second shell will have eight electrons, but we are still left with one electron, which must be placed in the M shell. Again, we can see that an extra shell is being added here. So, now we can conclude that whenever we talk about group trends or study elements from top to bottom, extra shells will be added and the electronic cloud will expand. Now, we should discuss what happens in the case of periods. If we consider elements from left to right in periods, no extra shells are being added. Let's understand this with the elements of the second period. The first member is lithium, and it has valence electrons in the L shell. If we move towards beryllium, its atomic number is 4, and the valence electron will still be in the L shell since it can have a maximum of 8 electrons. Similarly, as we move from carbon to neon, we can see that in each case, the valence electrons are present in the same shell, which is the L shell. So, we can understand that no extra shells are added when moving from left to right in periods. However, one thing to remember is that we should not include transition elements in this case, because they have an irregular trend, and we will focus on non-transition elements. Now, we should move towards the shielding effect. The shielding effect is the phenomenon in which electrons shield or protect each other from the effect of the nucleus. If extra shells keep increasing, it means there are more chances for inner electrons to shield outer electrons. To clearly understand this concept, assume there are many people in the same place. We might face difficulties seeing what's next to us because the person next to us is blocking the main view we want to observe. Similarly, if extra shells are being added, the shielding effect will increase. However, if extra shells remain the same, the shielding effect will also remain the same. Now, we can understand what nuclear charge refers to in the periodicity of properties. Simply, nuclear charge means the number of protons in the nucleus of a particular element. For example, the nuclear charge of hydrogen is plus one, which shows it has one proton, and the nuclear charge of carbon is plus six, since it has six protons. One thing to keep in mind is that nuclear charge will always increase whether we move in groups or periods, because elements are arranged based on ascending atomic numbers. Now, let's discuss what periodicity of properties actually means. Periodicity explains how atomic radius, ionization energy, electron affinity, electronegativity, and metallic or non-metallic character change in groups and periods. First, we will start with the atomic radius. It can be defined as the average distance between the nucleus of an atom and its outermost electrons. Now, we should learn how atomic radius changes in groups and periods. First, we will discuss the group trend. As we move from top to bottom in any particular group, we see that the atomic number is increasing, which means nuclear charge is increasing. Importantly, extra shells are being added from top to bottom in the group, and the shielding effect also increases. Due to the addition of extra shells, the distance between the nucleus and the outermost electrons increases. Hence, we can say that the atomic radius increases from top to bottom in a group. But if we look at the periodic trend, although the nuclear charge is also increasing here. Keep in mind that no extra shells are added when moving from left to right in periods. If no extra shells are added, it means the shielding effect will also remain the same. Here, we should understand that the atomic number is increasing, but no electronic shells are added, which shows that incoming electrons are being pulled closer to the nucleus. This means that due to the nuclear pull, the size decreases as we keep adding electrons. Hence, we can say that the atomic radius decreases from left to right in a period. Now we should move towards ionization energy. 
Actually, ionization energy can be defined as the minimum energy required to remove an electron from a neutral gaseous atom in its ground state. Actually, this process always requires energy because we need to overcome the attractive force between the positively charged nucleus and the negatively charged electron. Now, let's understand how ionization energy changes across a period in the periodic table. When we move from left to right in a period, we observe that ionization energy generally increases. To understand why this happens, we need to consider two important factors. First, the atomic size decreases across a period, which means the outer electrons are closer to the nucleus. Second, the nuclear charge increases with each element. Actually, these two factors together make it harder to remove an electron as we move across a period. Let's take period 2 as an example. Lithium has a low ionization energy, while fluorine has a much higher ionization energy because its electrons are held more tightly by the stronger nuclear charge. Moving to the trend down a group, we observe that ionization energy decreases as we go down. Let's understand this deeply. Consider the alkali metals lithium, sodium, potassium, and rubidium. As we go down this group, each element has its outer electron in a new shell that's further from the nucleus. Although the nuclear charge increases, the distance of the outer electron from the nucleus has a stronger effect. Now, let's understand successive ionization energies, which are the energies required to remove electrons one after another. To make it clear, the first ionization energy removes one electron from a neutral atom. The second ionization energy removes another electron from the resulting positive ion, and so on. Each successive ionization energy is always larger than the previous one. This is due to the reason that the cationic radius is always smaller than its parent atom, and it is difficult to remove electron which is closer to nucleus as compared to that electrons which is away from nucleus. Now we will move towards electron affinity. It can be defined as the energy change that occurs when an electron is added to a neutral gaseous atom in its ground state. Actually, when an atom accepts an electron, it either releases energy or absorbs energy. If energy is released, we call it a negative electron affinity. And if energy is absorbed, we call it a positive electron affinity. But keep in mind, whenever first electron is added in neutral atom, energy will be released, but when an electron is added in negatively charged ion, it will be absorbed. It means that first electron affinity will have negative sign, and next, each value will have positive sign. Now we will discuss trend of electron affinity in period. When we move from left to right in a period, we observe that electron affinity goes on increasing in period, and this happens because nuclear charge increases and shielding effect of inner electrons also remain same. Since we have already discussed that in period with successive addition of electrons, it becomes difficult to add electrons since force of attraction increases from left to right. Hence, electron affinity will increases from left to right in periods. If we move towards trend of electron affinity down in a group, in this case, electron affinity will decreases. It actually happens due to following reasons. Since in group with increase of nuclear charge, extra shells are being added, and shielding effect also increases, so it becomes easier to add electron. So we can say that electron affinity will decreases from top to bottom in a group. Now we can move towards electronegativity. It can be defined as the relative tendency of an atom to attract shared pair of electrons towards itself. In a simple way, we can say that when a bond is formed between to like atoms, then electron density will be equally shared. But when bond is formed between two unlike atoms, in this case, electron density will be shifted towards that atom which is more electronegative. And this tendency is actually called electronegativity. It can be measured by Pauling scale and fluorine was given reference value, which is four and is maximum in the periodic table. Now let's understand how electronegativity changes across a period in the periodic table. When we move from left to right in a period, we observe that electronegativity generally increases. To make it clear, let's look at second period. Here lithium has a low electronegativity of 1, while fluorine has the highest, which is 4. This happens because as we move across a period, the atomic size decreases while nuclear charge increases. Actually, this combination means atoms on the right side of the period can attract shared electrons more strongly than those on the left. Moving to the trend down a group, we observe that electronegativity generally decreases as we go down. Let's understand this deeply by looking at the halogen group such as fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. As we go down the group, each atom becomes larger and the outer electrons move further from the nucleus. Although the nuclear charge increases, but increase in the electronic cloud predominate over nuclear charge. So due to these factors, we can conclude that electronegativity will keep on decreasing from top to bottom in group. Now let's understand metallic and non-metallic character deeply. These characters can be defined as the tendency of an element to either lose electrons and form positive ions, which is called metallic character, or gain electrons and form negative ions 
which is called non-metallic character. Now, let's explore how metallic and non-metallic character changes across a period in the periodic table. When we move from left to right in a period, we observe that metallic character decreases while non-metallic character increases. To understand why this happens, let's look at third period where sodium is a highly reactive metal that readily loses electrons, while chlorine is a reactive non-metal that eagerly accepts electrons. Actually, this gradual transition occurs because atomic size decreases and nuclear charge increases across the period. This means atoms on the right side hold their electrons more tightly and even attract additional electrons, while atoms on the left side hold their outer electrons loosely. For example, magnesium is less metallic than sodium but more metallic than aluminum in the third period. Moving to the trend down a group, we observe that metallic character increases as we go down for groups, while non-metallic character increases as we go up. Let's understand this deeply by looking at group 14. Carbon is non-metallic, silicon and germanium are metalloids, while tin and lead are metals. As we go down a group, the outer electrons become further from the nucleus and are held less tightly, making them easier to lose. Actually, this is why cesium, at the bottom of group 1, is more metallic than lithium at the top. Now let's explore the transition from metallic to non-metallic properties in detail. Some elements, called metalloids, show properties intermediate between metals and non-metals. To make it clear, elements like silicon and germanium can behave as either metals or non-metals depending on the conditions. These elements form a diagonal border in the periodic table, separating metals from non-metals. Actually, this transition isn't sudden but gradual, which is why boron shows some metallic properties despite being classified as a non-metal, while aluminum shows some non-metallic properties despite being a metal. Let's understand how electronic configuration influences these characters. Elements with few electrons in their outer shell tend to be metallic because they can easily lose these electrons to achieve a stable configuration. In contrast, elements with nearly full outer shells tend to be non-metallic as they prefer to gain electrons to achieve stability. For example, sodium with one outer electron exhibits strong metallic character, while chlorine with seven outer electrons shows strong non-metallic character. Actually, this is why noble gases, with their completely filled outer shells, show neither metallic nor non-metallic character they're already stable and don't need to lose or gain electrons. Now let's understand valency. Actually, valency can be defined as the combining capacity of an atom, which is determined by the number of electrons an atom can lose, gain, or share to achieve a stable electronic configuration. Actually, this property is fundamentally linked to the electronic configuration of the outermost shell, also known as the valence shell. Now, let's understand how valency changes across a period in the periodic table. When we move from left to right in a period, we observe an interesting pattern in valency. To understand this pattern clearly, let's look at third period sodium has a valency of 1, as it can lose 1 electron, aluminum has a valency of 3, as it can lose or share 3 electrons, and chlorine has a valency of 1, as it needs to gain 1 electron. Actually, this variation happens because elements try to achieve the nearest noble gas configuration either by losing, gaining, or sharing electrons. For example, in period 3, silicon shows a valency of 4 because it can share its 4 outer electrons to achieve a stable octet structure. Moving to the trend down a group, we observe that valency remains largely constant. Let's understand this deeply by looking at first group elements, such as lithium, sodium, potassium, and rubidium. Each of these elements has one electron in its outermost shell regardless of which period they are, giving them all a valency of 1. Actually, this consistency occurs because elements in the same group have similar outer electronic configurations, just in different shells. This is why all halogens show a valency of 1, and all alkaline earth metals show a valency of 2. 